I'm David Henderson. I'm one of the steering committee members for the Bristol Technology Festival. So I'm one of the founding members of that steering committee. The Tech Fest comes back for its third year this year. It's running between the 11th and the 15th of October. And we're going to have about 40 to 50 events across the week that are free to anyone and everyone. And the good news is that the majority of those will be in person as well. So anyone can come along and anyone can take part. Yeah, I think that's the one thing that everybody's looking forward to, isn't it? Being able to actually see people in the flesh. I suppose you want to give us a bit of a snapshot as to, to why it was set up and what's it all about. Yeah, sure. So why it was set up was um, it came about, pro well, three years ago, we were having lots of conversations about what we could do to promote the city and promote all the great things that are going on in the tech sector here in Bristol. Anyone that's sort of dabbled in, in the tech, tech scene here knows that there's so much going on. It's really hard sometimes to get the identity of Bristol and Bath and the Southwest out because as that elevator pitch is so hard because there's actually so much going on. The idea was to create one week where we have, an, have a festival and we have everything condensed into that week. And we can really showcase what's going on in the region. So people that want to come to Bristol and Bath and the Southwest can see a snapshot of all the great companies and innovators and what the universities are doing in that one week. So that's how it came about. This year we've got about 40, 50 events. We've got been lucky that we've got some really great sponsors behind us as well. So we've got Softcat are uh, the headlines sponsors this year so they've been really great helping us promote the event Deloitte are going to be sponsoring the opening launch night and then we've got something this year where we've got community partners so we've got about 30 of those and there's companies like TLT Burgess Salmon Navos NatWest X Ledger to name a few who have all said we want to support the festival we want to be part of it and we'll we'll put some money in to help you sort of spread the reach and get get that message further so hopefully it's going to be a replication of the first year where we had over 5,000 people come to the events over the week so really looking forward to it and as I said have a look on the website there's generally about 10 events every day so there's, there's something there for everyone who can benefit from coming along to the festival absolutely anyone is the honest answer there carl so we've got events covering digital skills so if you've never worked in tech and you want to get an idea about what it's like what roles are, are open to you We've got digital skills events. We've got an uh, event by Tech for Good. We've got a FinTech Day. We've got something on NFTs, which I don't really understand. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting event. It really is something for everyone. And we're trying to get schools a bit more engagement as well. So have a look, Like I said, have a look on the website. There will be something that will interest you. This is Nick Dean, uh, MD of Adlib in Bristol. We're a tech data marketer science recruitment company so B Corp certified since 2019 and now employee owned um yeah so uh, we work with the festival since day one um and i think that first festival was such a big success as well which i think was just testament to everything that you see from like the work that comes out of tax park and you know ben and the team do down there in terms of that community comes together as a community you know even like now we're talking because we get on and it's a community you know it's not just <laughs> Better. Yeah, sure, there are there are elements of it, but that doesn't mean to say you don't get on and you don't share and you don't kind of grow from each other, which is, I think, a really good example of how of, of why Bristol works so well. So we've always been heavily involved in events from a kind of a knowledge sharing from a talent point of view, rather than just pushing recruitment down kind of people's throats, which is not what we've ever wanted to do. But there is a huge amount of information and insight that we gain that can be shared and can be valuable. So, yeah, you kind of you want to come at the, the community from that angle and for the right reasons and, and to add value to it as as anyone in a community would. And I think we were talking about some of the, the events you guys are involved in are, are sort of probably taking a slightly different angle as well to, to what probably most would expect from a recruitment firm. So you've got three events you said you're involved in. So just so it's kind of like on a, on a note from ourselves. So we're a B Corp, which effectively means that we we kind of balance profit and purpose and, and there's, there's great consideration in the way that you, you work with people and planet and so a lot of and actually increasingly our client base is is, is always increasing around kind of purpose-driven organizations so we've, we've got three communities that we run kind of internally each of which is going to be producing an event we've got the green tech southwest who are now up to a thousand members uh, they launched a year last february who are going amazing so yeah they've got three female technology innovators from the southwest region they're going to be talking about all kind of lightning talks around all manner of subjects which would, which would be great we've got tech ethics which again is another partnership that got off the ground earlier this year which is really a really good kind of event series and then finally motherboard which is a, a business partner event series that we launched this year that's taken off really really strongly we've got sponsorship from not on the high street and that's all about championing mums in tech so each of those will give a, an, an individual focus within those three core areas but ultimately they fundamentally come back to you know why we're a b core what we stand for and and, and why we get involved but they should be really interesting you know i agree i think they say three 
great events really and, and so many people still don't know about the tech festival or, or what it's all about so from your perspective i guess why was it set up and but why should also people kind of get involved and, and what's the benefit of it it was there was so many events spread over the year that touched on each other with either uh, kind of common ground and audiences. There was a conclusion that it was like, let's just put it all together in one week and everybody get to everything rather than us crossing things and give an open platform for the community to then effectively put on your own events. So, so this was what it is then comes into a festival and structure where you know that for the week you're going to pick off several things that are relevant to you and you get down and I think that first year was really interesting because it was like will people actually show up or will they just be evented out by the end of the week but it just grew and grew and grew and every event was you know attended fantastically so the platform just worked um, and I think it just means it condenses it but you've also got people which are kind of blocking that time out of their, their working week rather than an hour here and an hour there and going, I'm just going to go and learn and share and meet people. And it, it, it was a really, really great platform for doing that. I think it'd be lovely to actually start seeing some people in person, won't we? I think this has be the first time in about 18 months any of us have actually managed to go to an event and, and see some people. So I think it'd be brilliant. I think it's good, it's good to see you involved in it and um, <laughs> all the best for, for this festival and many more to come. So I'm Michaela Eschbach and I'm Managing Director of Founders for School. Um, Founders for Schools, we are an UK ed tech um, charity connecting educators with a network of inspirational business leaders to improve the employment chances of young people. We facilitate skills related pathway and apprenticeship based events and as well as inspirational career talks, um, which, which are really in demand of, of all schools and, and around the area. We um, are all based on working with inspiring business role models and work placements are a core part supporting young people to actually build skills that they are ever so much uh, looking forward to acquire prior to entering the world of work. Over the last six years, we've actually worked with nearly um, 500,000 students um, across the UK and we have facilitated more than 1.4 million student employee encounters. Um, and we are working with young people aged 6 to 24 years old. Something for everyone. It's a pretty cool thing to do, isn't it? And I think being able to help more people into a career in technology and promote that, I think that's absolutely great. And I guess, Sen, Michaela, so you guys are kind of involved in, in the tech festival, and I believe you're putting on a, an event with Russ Shaw. Uh, so I guess are you able maybe just to talk us through a little bit about what that is? Yes, um, absolutely. So yes, we are hosting um, a panel discussion at the Bristol Tech Festival. It's actually going to be hosted on the 11th of October at 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. So anybody interested? I'm happy for you to sign up and join us. We will be exploring how to deliver skills and digital skills for the workforce of tomorrow. Really, that, that's a really fundamental and important topic um, we feel must be addressed and there's no better place um, th than a festival talking about technology. Because as we look at the UK um, economic prospects, um, there's going to be a substantial growth in digital uh, tech positions which require all kind of um, technological skills and digital skills. I know that as an industry, we need advanced skills like high encoding, data analytics, um, but we actually also need a lot of very basic um, tech and digital tech skills. Therefore, we need a lot of more talent enter entering the industry to, to support fill, fill that and allow us to speed um, and accelerate the growth we are experiencing um, at current rate. And this is clearly uh, already evident that we are lacking exactly that type of talent. If you're looking at the current openings within the industry. I mean, no doubt um, there's a there's an issue with the industry to, to attract the talent needed. So the discussion we will be focusing on, um, the Bristol Tech Festival, and um, we'll focus on how to get young people a, interested in STEM or STEAM, because the arts play a much bigger role um, now in technology, actually, um, than it ever has done before. And how can we help them to understand and acquire the skills needed in order to enter and thrive in tech-related um, roles? And how to become successful members of the industry? We will be looking and we will be discussing how this needs to change in the near future and how and do we actually have the infrastructures in place to deliver what our economy needs? How can education outreach help us? and to bridge the gap and all these issues um, will be addressed in our panel discussion. We are very delighted to answer your question about Ross Shaw and, and, and what role does he play. So along with a strong panel of local experts who will be confirmed shortly, Ross Shaw, founder of Tech London Advocates, as well as the founder of Global Tech Advocates, a passionate expert in the digital skills arena and a dedicated board member of Digital Boost and Founders for Schools, will be able to give a great insight into our discussion and shining light in some of the biggest challenges and potential solutions. So we're really delighted to have him on as part of our, our panel. And I suppose, then, Michaela, I guess who, what sort of people would benefit from, from coming along to it? 
So as we're discussing how we can attract young talent into the industry, I actually think our, our speech is open for any audience, whether it is business business representatives um, interested in how can they attract and what is their role and how can they step up, take ownership of attracting young, young talent and building the appreciation of young people um, uh, and the importance of the industry to so people from the educational space or the governmental space. So w what can they do? What is their role? How can we support them and how can we bridge that gap together? Young people or parents equally, because I think often young people lack the understanding of what are the real issues when they talk about digital skills. How often do young people actually think, well, I know how to use my phone. I know how to use, um, you know, I'm great in social media, so I have all digital skills, but not appreciating that there's much more to it. And that actually what industry needs is not necessarily the skills that they have built so far. And there's far more to learn. So I do think our discussion will shine light into many of these areas relevant to different audiences um so yes they are all welcome yeah. and do you know where you're hosting it yet online it will be um held online so you can literally That's sign up on www.founders4schools.org.uk and you will find right on the top of the, the website there's a little banner um sign posting to bristol tech festival and they can sign up to our session there right. so i guess what was it that attracted you to kind of think yeah that this is something we'd love to be a part of well the tech festival really really meets um what we are what we stand for you know we, we are really looking into supporting and people getting into stem we are very one of our strategically um important and um, um pillars of what we are driving is digital skills and how can we support young people acquire those skills and actually get the understanding of what we talk about when we when we do them so when we've been invited um to be part in the Bristol Tech Festival appreciating the importance of technology within the west of England and our desire to really play a, a, a crucial and fundamental role in bridge in helping bridging the gap. So I thought for us, this is an outstanding opportunity. So please do go to foundersforschools.org.uk and sign up today to be part on the 11th of October. Thank you very much. My name is Zara Nanu. I'm CEO and co-founder of Gap Square. I come from a from a kind of social justice, human rights background, policy background, and Gap Square is very much a tech company based in Bristol. Building Gap Square was my first exposure to tech uh, and building a tech company, and kind of everything was new in that space. But we wanted to build a business that's focused around social justice, that's focused around equality, and focused around particularly helping business accelerate how they contribute to that justice and how they, they make their talent feel valued, increase diversity and inclusion, and overall take a bigger leap into the 21st century where business is more fair and business is more sustainable. Brilliant. That sounds really good. And, and look, I'm sure most people listening to this have, have heard of you guys and, and the success that, that you've had. But how being part of kind of the, the, the tech ecosystem here in Bristol and, and the Southwest has helped you and sort of what part you think, I suppose, what the tech festival plays and, and why then it's important for, for people to come along and get involved? Yeah, so we, we've started Gap Square in 2015 and immediately became part of that tech ecosystem in Bristol by becoming part of Set Squared, which is an accelerator of high growth, high tech companies based at the engine shed. And what we didn't expect, we did expect that the accelerator is going to provide us with a platform where we can learn and, and uh, kind of get more skills in running a business, particularly a tech business. But we, what we didn't expect is how quickly we're going to be thrown into an ecosystem that is so friendly, that provides a lot of collaboration, a lot of support, where there's a lot of trust between people and they can just you know, when they're having a hard time, they can just be honest with each other about having a hard time when they can all celebrate successes. And we're actually, because Bristol is so ethically minded as a city, it's reflected very much in the tech ecosystem. That tech ecosystem also kind of provided validation that, that running a business in the space of equity and equality is, is normal because everybody else was in some way running businesses that have a positive impact on the world. Has it made sort of a, I suppose the, the growth and the, you've just been acquired as well which is which is brilliant what part if any do you think sort of that the ecosystem sort of the openness and collaborative sort of nature of things that happens in and around sort of Bristol has, has helped you guys I think that the openness and collaboration of the tech ecosystem is what has infused Gap Square with energy to keep on going over the past five years we've grown organically uh, we've bootstrapped our way to kind of the, a team of 12 in Bristol and having customers all over the world so 
bootstrapping a business is really hard. If you don't have a collaborative ecosystem around you, if you don't have other founders being your friends and being your cheerleaders almost within Bristol, but also outside Bristol, then it, it, it is even harder. So this ecosystem has been the fuel behind the gap the the success at gap square and i guess then sort of we would focus more sort of on then the the tech festival because you have to think three three years now and i think it, i think it's brilliant but i guess why, why why do you think it's good why is it important to you i guess obviously you're not sponsoring you don't have an event on this year or anything but i guess why are you keen to be involved and what, what do you think it kind of brings brings to the city i think it's just kind of it's an opportunity for everyone to showcase the great things that the tech ecosystem is doing in bristol to the community and to bring the community back into the ecosystem I've been going to London Tech Week, for instance, for for years and always felt like there's a gap in Bristol in terms of doing similar kind of events and bringing people from the community into the tech space, showing that this is not just a closed thing happening at the engine shed or somewhere else in the city. It's actually technology that affects people's lives, education, work, healthcare, joint collaborative working that happens during that week that then also spills into the rest of the year because people continue to have conversations, partnerships are built, investments are, are ahead. So it's it's a great opportunity to bring everyone together, not just in tech, but beyond. I guess, what would your advice to be to people? Because I, I suppose some people might be listening to the podcast or have not been along to one of these these tech festivals and pick some of the different events to go to. I guess they might have a view that, oh, is it, is it just for really deep technical people and these conversations? Is it just going to be room full of people like that? Or what would your advice be to somebody who's not been to one before? I think it, one of the unique characteristics of the Bristol Tech Festival is how open it is and how inclusive it is for communities and people who are not in the tech space. And this is very important. Important. I mean, the, the World Economic Forum has produced a report in November 2020 looking at the future of jobs, for instance, and 20 jobs that are on the increase between now and 2025 are very much tech roles, data science, Internet of Things, robotics. And the, they, they can be scary words if you don't come from a tech background. But Bristol Tech Festival really is a unique opportunity for people to learn that these are actually tangible everyday things and we all have a role to play in building those jobs and building those companies. And that's why I love it. I think you, you can know nothing about technology or, or you can be sort of the absolute best person in the room, but all of the events are, are really worthwhile coming along to. Yeah, it's, it's very open. It's very inclusive. It has a very open language. I, I love that thing that it's not using acronyms. It's not using scary words. It's making tech accessible to anyone. And it's also for any age. You, we, 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 I've seen people who are like from young people to people in their 80s being interested in the tech festival over the past three years. So it's it's great to see that kind of engagement. Hello there, my name is Richard Norton, aka Norts. I like to be considered just as a creative. I've worked in a lot of advertising and marketing agents over the years. Three years ago, I set up a business, co-founded it with a woman called Kerry Harrison, a very talented woman called Kerry Harrison, called Tiny Giant. And recently, I've also set up something called Get Noughts. And what I'm working on at the moment is the intersection between kind of creative ideas for advertising and marketing, colliding with kind of technology. I'm kind of intrigued, Noughts, to find out what you're going to be doing at this tech festival. What's this one going to be about? Oh, 13th of October, 6.30pm, at a, an old stomping ground of the Square Club. Uh, what's weird about it, it's the first event one has done live with people in the room for uh, 18 months or so. But this is going to be something different. This is a first. This is something that's going to be called You Get What You Get, right? Which comes from the saying that someone once said to me in advertising, you get what you get and you don't get upset, Right. Uh, and what we're going to do thematically, it's the Bristol Technology Festival, so therefore it should have a technological bent. But equally, I come from a sort of creative marketing advertising background. Mm. One of the arenas in all over this year is the sort of crypto space. So we're, we're focusing very specifically on non-fungible tokens and what they can't do. Well, they, they can do many things. And then you'll see fungible tokens and there's the association with blockchain and crypto, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll probably do what I do, which is kind of I'll host it and glue it together. But we also have some <laughs> very, very good guest speakers, such as Irfan Watkins of Chapel Live and Terence Riley of 
of Alter, uh, and also Derek Amadzai, uh, who's an associate of mine, talking about different facets of NFTs and where they are in the world. So we'll talk about some of the projects we've kind of touched on working on, some of the things in the wider world that are happening. Erfan, on the other hand, is going to talk about one of his many businesses, but this one, Chapel, which is essentially about creating revenue for performers and live venues. So we thought one of the things we do, well, if it's going to be about music, essentially it's going to be the, live, the Chapel Live launch at our event. So I thought, well, we might as well get a band in, aren't we? Let's have a band as well. <laughs> so we have got a, a band called Tiny Dino. So they're going to perform at various points during the evening. The music they they create, photographs that are taken, it's going to all be turned into NFTs. Or um, yeah, it's going to be kind of mad. There's probably going to be a few surprises. I'd be very surprised, Carl, if it was a dry, dull event. <laughs> I suppose one of the things we've always tried to do is when you talk about these things, it's easy, I'm sure at tech events, to get sucked into the sort of, to go deep. But <clears throat> we've always taken a sort of real attitude of low code, no code type view. But this is an interesting one because we're at the Square Club, a little bit of the issue of social distancing. We're very kindly, they've allowed us to have the two floors. So I think hot. what Bristol does with the tech festival is brilliant. You know what I mean? And I think kind of we're one of the only the, the few cities hey, that has this really cool kind of collaborative ecosystem. I mean, what, what's your view and, and why are you always keen to be so involved in, in the tech festival? Well, it's interesting. When I was always in an advertising marketing world, that was my kind of universe. It was all about ads and brands and businesses. Technology, I wasn't really au fait with the Bristol technology sink. And then when one left and sort of tried to intersect creativity and technology, realized that you had to reach out to this community and you had to talk to the sort of people at the engine shed and you had to find out who were the movers and shakers, who are the people who are doing investment, who are the this, that and the other. All the really brilliant people exist in this Bristol tech scene. I think, like you say, Bristol seems to thrive on amazing projects being created through collaborative means. And this is an opportunity to see some of those people who, and some of the amazing things they're doing. I mean, there's a lot of world leading businesses, isn't there, in the technology space in Bristol. On the one hand, it's to celebrate that. On the other hand, it's kind of amplifies some of the maybe smaller things that are going on that you don't know about. It's just a nice little voyage. It's a voyage of discovery, isn't it, over that time? What I always love though is, is, is you kind of speak to people that have lived in the city, works in the city, all their life here but they didn't know about it I think the more we can all shout about it and do things to promote it and get more and more people involved yeah. and, and again a lot of I think great ideas great thoughts that lead to something start very often by very random collisions with people you just do not know who you're going to talk to who you're going to collide with it's going to be great fun and um, yeah looking forward to it Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm co-founder and leading growth at Stratify. Stratify is an app to help people invest more sustainably and in a personalized way. Our goal was to democratize access to some of the tools which are available to investment banks and to the high net worth individuals that they work with. And we wanted to bring a slice of that to the retail investment market to help people create personalized investment strategies that match up their values to their investment profile so that they don't have to rely on a fund manager to do the work for them. And anyone that knows you guys is probably fairly familiar with the success you guys have had recently and the rage you did. Do you want to just share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So crowdfunding made a lot of sense for us because we're a B2C business and Crowdcube investors, equity crowdfunding are our exact target audience. They like investing in companies and in the fintech space, it's really hot to be able to get investment from the crowd to not just get investment, but to build an audience as well. An army of brand ambassadors and people who are then going to be able to test out your product and help you along the way. I guess creating investor FOMO was a biggest challenge and once you're able to become overfunded people start flocking to your product a lot more i think one of the biggest challenges was being as reactive as possible to all of the questions that just flood the page as soon as you open up some of them are really critical some of them are genuinely nice and just want to find out a bit more and you've just got to be as kind of honest as possible and try not to be vague because people do want answers and if you're being vague then they're less likely to trust you trust the business and buy into the vision that it is you're trying to sell bristol ecosystem i think was the accelerator that we're part of sex squared was crucial to help us find all the right support from a from a legal perspective from a marketing perspective to just make connections so that we had the right right backing before so that we could start off on the right foot you guys absolutely smashed a crowdfund didn't you was it 200 percent of the, the target you ended up raising it's impressive 224 percent overfunded went in for a 200k target and we got to over 440 so we were buzzing with that investors from 53 different countries over a thousand people sort of following the, the raise as as investors 
investors. Really great for, for audience building. There's the, the FinTech West event, which I think you guys are going to be part of on Wednesday, the 13th, a part of the festival. So do you know sort of what, what that event's going to be about? For- so I think we just want to show the, the milestones that we've reached and make it provide as much help as we can to other businesses going through the same stage through that event by kind of just talking about the, the process that we, we went through and kind of sharing as much of the experience as possible. In particular, I think for female founders in the fintech space, this is really important just to kind of give them a give them another voice that can be heard in the space. I mean, yeah, if anything, it's just network building, sharing kind of milestones so that other people can move faster and not come across the same the same problems. I think that's what's really cool about Bristol, isn't it, in the Southwest, is the fact that everyone's so collaborative. Yeah, it's really tight knit and it's not comparable to anywhere else in the UK. And have you been to one of the technology festivals before in the past or is this the first one? I've seen a lot of the virtual stuff which has happened, but I've never been to one in person. So Anything else you want to run over at all? The support that David from Hargreaves has given us has been invaluable to kind of helping us from a regulatory side of things. And this is another reason the, the network in Bristol is so kind of so special because it really lets you sort of tap into so many different expertise you might not necessarily have and kind of just gives you access to all those places and people. So I'm Mark, I'm Digital Strategy Director at New Icon. I've moved into a sales and marketing role over the last year. Predominantly, I come from a design background. Yeah, we just wanted to share our knowledge of how we help tech startups in the region and um, organizations who are looking to create products or streamline operations. We use all sorts of different digital technologies, um, web and mobile to do that and work on some IoT projects too. So we wanted to give people a broad spectrum of how you can solve problems using digital solutions, how we use design techniques to bring ideas to life, the idea. Well, I suppose, look, are you able then maybe just to talk us through what event you're going to be putting on for the festival? Yeah, of course. So we're calling it Fueling Innovation. What we're trying to do is show people how you can identify problems in the world or in your business. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to solve problems in the world, then whether you've got a very basic idea or a solution or whether you're just exploring that, we're going to take people from design thinking through to design doing, which basically means that we look at problem spaces and explore those. And then we move into from an ideation phase into identifying who that problem is being solved for the personas, the environment that that problem's um, existing in. And then we start to work into solutions to show people how to quickly develop ideas and then look at those sort of high impact, low effort solutions that you can take forwards. And then from that sort of design thinking ideation phase, we're going to show how we bring things to life very, very quickly for clients, not just show how we do it, um, because this isn't about saying you have to be a designer. This is trying to make innovation accessible for anyone. So this is showing how you can get a bit of paper, get up on a whiteboard and start to come up with these ideas. And you don't have to be a graphic designer to start thinking about user experience and how something hangs together to make a really good solution. So we're trying to make all areas of that accessible. And then we're going to go through to show how you can bring it to life and then later how you can take that to market, how you can test those assumptions with people, get real feedback, how you can then take that product to something that's been developed and then take it to market. Because ultimately you can have the best product in the world, but if um, nobody knows it exists, then what's the point, right? So with our sort of digital marketing hat on, Richard, my colleague, Richard O'Brien, will be doing a talk on that sort of fueling innovation and showing how we can do a launch pad and how you can sort of attract your users, where they hang out, how you can convert them to come onto your platform and hopefully become, you know, raving fans, as we call it. And I suppose, who, who's the event aimed at, Mark? Is it is it sort of CEOs, founders, MDs, or can it be open to people that are just sort of aspiring and maybe thinking about sort of launching something or working in an organisation and wanting new ideas? Who would benefit best or who's it open to? Yeah, pretty much all of that, actually. We we do niche down in some areas of the business, but we have always prided ourselves on being very broad. And I thought, well, why not you know, show that in the talk, talk that we do? So we will be appealing to all of those people because we have large organizations we work with like Airbus, and they have, you know, big operational efficiency challenges, you know, big amounts of data and disparate systems and communication to Toulouse, to, to Bristol and all those challenges. So I think it can appeal to CEOs of large businesses and operations directors who are just trying to solve that. We often say that lots of great ideas in big businesses get left on the shop floor where the guy who actually does the work has a great idea. They are entrepreneurial. They're just working within a big organization. And it might be the guy, you know, doing the lathing, the CNC cutting on the on the shop floor that has a good idea, but he has no idea how to work with his departments to bring it to life. 
and we can help with that. And also on the flip side, you have, you know, those tech startups, those people who have just come up with idea, had that light bulb, back to the future flux capacitor, as I call it, moment. And, you know, they, they again, they're like, where do I start? You know, product market fit and all that side of things is important. But sometimes just visualizing it and just bringing it to life visually gives everyone something to talk around. So we really want to appeal to those people too that just want to flesh out an idea and just create something that they might want to take to an investor. Um, and sometimes you just need something to come to life to do that with. You know, a PowerPoint only gets you so far. So. And then I suppose just the, the final question from my perspective is sort of why are you keen to be involved in a festival and why do you think it's sort of important for the city? Yeah, we've always wanted to give back to Bristol, um, but just that learning side of things, you know, we're not doing this to be a sales pitch. We're doing it that we want people to have a go. We want more innovation in the city. We want more people to think that they can do this. And it's not as hard as people make out, you know, and I just um, we've been doing it for 15 years. So I suppose that's easy for us to say, but we want to impart our knowledge um, on, on everyone else to see that this is the sort of thing that you can get not saying that you can do everything without a subject expert, but there is a lot you can do to get from A to B and um, just move your project forward to move your innovation forward. So that's our main driver to teach people. We want to educate. So. Good, good. And anything else, anything else people need to be aware of or sort of anything else you want to kind of get across? Um, I mean, we're a bit unusual that we are half digital agency and the software house side, but because we've got clients like Airbus, we do a lot of IoT work. So, you know, connected devices to the internet. And we've got a bit of an announcement we're going to make at the end of the show about an exciting partnership. And we want to just talk about how design can be more than just digital. We are working with physical products meeting the connected world. Um, you know, these days, even your car's connected, you know, so there's so many areas that are quite exciting in that. And there isn't that many companies in Bristol that talk about that side. I think um, they either seem to be on one side of the fence or the other. And we are a bit different that we sort of cross that chasm. So that's something we want to sort of get across and say that, you know, this can be your smartwatch connecting to your mobile phone and whatever in between. So that's exciting. And we got a bit of, bit of news to share at the end of the talk on that. So Sounds good. I look forward to seeing what that is then. And um, do you know when and where the event's happening? Just to get people to know. Yeah, Tuesday, 4.30, um, and we'll be doing it at the Engine Shed. My name is Ingrid Anusik. I'm the marketing director at Money Hub. Money Hub is powering the financial well-being for all, and we are doing this through our financial data aggregation, intelligence, and payments. So, Ingrid, I can probably guess which event you guys are going to be involved in. Do you want to just talk us through which one it's going to be and what part you guys are playing in it? Well, as part of the FinTech West board, we will be taking place at the FinTech West seminar on the 13th of October, where our CEO, Sam Seaton, will be um, sharing her insights on the future is FinTech and connectivity and collaboration and then i suppose do you know sort of who because i think what's really cool about the festival is it's kind of open to lots of sort of different people if you'd like and it doesn't necessarily need to be working sort of in in technology or in a particular sector but i guess who do you think would benefit from coming along and sort of listening to, to what sam's going to be talking about i mean for us in general it's like we well most of us here in the region i think we focus on businesses outside of our own region and for us it's really really important to highlight our thriving tech and fintech scene here in and around Bristol. For us, um, it's important to share the insight of the transformation happening in financial services, which we obviously always talk about open banking and open finance, which might not be so much known for the people outside of our world. But because it's going to be impacting any, any business in the future, we really believe that particularly businesses based here in Bristol and the surroundings should really come and have a listen because, yes, there is a big, big transformation happening and not just obviously around us, but all over the world. Money Hub being so active in that area of open banking, and open finance, we want to make sure our own region is aware of what's happening and yeah, come and listen and, and find out more about it because it's quite an exciting time. And then for, for you at Money Hub being sort of part of then the, the tech cluster in the Southwest, I mean, what sort of benefits have that had for, for you as an organization and a broader business, I guess? 
I mean, it's always, first of all, we, everybody is super friendly. And I think that is something and so collaborative, which is such a nice thing we have here in the region. But it's also having the people to very easily accessible to have a chat, hopefully very soon meet in person again. But it's just a co collaboration which is taking place. And the knowledge sharing between us is, is really, I mean, I always hear it from other people how easy it is. So that is very exciting. And of course, as an employer, we have two fantastic universities in Bristol, but obviously outside in Bath and, and just over the bridge in Wales as well. So we have an incredible talent here and of course yeah we always love being here because of um, the work-life balance we can have having the top of the crop tech but also having beautiful access accessibility to the countryside so yeah I think it's a cool city isn't it you guys have done done really well in Bristol so I mean lots of people know who you are so I think it'd be really cool for people to come along and sort of listen to Sam talk about sort of some of the interesting things that are going on I guess why why are you always keen to be involved in the festival and have you done it before or is this sort of the first time that you guys have been involved no it's our second Second time last the, the the first time was when it's all digital and it's just it's just exciting a for us to learn as well what's happening around because as I said earlier we feel like we always run away and go to London and, and travel the world but actually miss what's happening in our own doorstep so that's for us what is really really important to keep our finger on the pulse then also share with what's happening in the world so we also want to show people how open banking works in action and we've joined forces with um, TechSpark and Bristol Tech Fest together with our local charity DigiLocal who help children or anybody in need of um, technology or a laptop makes them available. So they made those available during COVID. And we just, yeah, have created a QR code which people can scan and A, experience firsthand how open banking works because they very easily can just start donating via their open bank or via the banking app. But it's all with their authorization. So it's nothing to worry about, but it's just, yeah, technology in action um, and for a very good cause. So I hope. Brilliant. People can have a go and try it out. Good. All right, Ingrid. Well, look, thank you for your time. I think you're giving a really good insight into what people should expect. So uh, look forward to hearing from Sam on the, on the 13th. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Carl, and looking forward to the event. For those of you that I'm sure probably most people will recognise the logo and recognise who Deloitte are, but I guess for those who don't know, are you able to just tell us a bit about who you are, what you do and who Deloitte are? Hi, yeah, I'm uh, Sarah Kruger. I'm a consulting director at Deloitte um, and I lead our Southwest Tech Hub called TechWorks in Bristol. Deloitte is a global professional services and technology consulting firm. In the Southwest, we have audit, tax, consulting and corporate finance services. Um, and now in addition to this, we have our tech and digital services delivered by TechWorks team. Um, so TechWorks is, as I say, is our tech delivery capability. We do end-to-end -end tech delivery and have all the capabilities such as business analysts, UX designers, researchers, developers, testers, platform engineers, and everything. Yeah, everything needed to do tech delivery and work with our local clients in the southwest and Wales. Is that open to a range of different size of clients then? It's to work with any of our clients. Um, it's very much working on the um, imagine and deliver of their projects. Um, helping understand what problems they've got and then how we can potentially use technology to, to help improve the solution for them. Also working with a lot of our clients on digital transformation, hopefully with a lot of focus on the transformation as well as just digitising an, ex, um, an existing process. We work across all the different industries, so financial services, public sector, private sector as well. And yeah, we've done some projects where we had a small team of three um, although that was actually for a very big client, it was the NHS, but a small project um, doing drone delivery. Um, but yeah, full, full across all the range of uh, size of clients as well. So I suppose then sort of the involvement in the festival then, like what, what are you guys going to be involved in? What events are you going to be putting on? Yeah, so we supported the festival um, previously and we're really proud to be a community partner for it. Part of this uh, building tech works is part of our levelling up strategy. Um, people like myself are really passionate about the, the regions. Um, and having opportunities for local talent and also engaging with uh, with the local clients as well. So we're delivering five sessions on a range of topics, including drone space and motion simulation. I'm really excited um, that Deloitte is sponsoring the launch of the event as well. And just part of this is for us to really engage and connect with this local community as, as we're growing TechWorks ourselves. And by the same time, you're involved in a lot of things. And are you guys going to be at the events in person? Are you going to get to see real people? Definitely. Um, last year was um, was all virtual, so it will be great um, to have that opportunity to 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 meet people again. It sounds really exciting what you guys are going to be talking about. So uh, hopefully we'll look forward to getting along to some events and meeting you guys in person. So one thing I was going to say actually is another thing is just I mentioned it with local talent. 
but another one is just to really engage with local talent as well yeah it's about having the touch points with people in in the region and the city isn't it and actually being able to to showcase what you guys are doing because like you said not everyone assumes sort of Deloitte have that capability in in the southwest do they really yeah so, definitely no really good to kind of showcase that well when I uh, changed jobs um some of my friends who've known me for like 20 years were like what you're going to become an accountant and I was like wow I've got a real challenge here you think it's more likely <laughs> I'm going to become an accountant than Deloitte do technology so um so yeah it's, in reality it's a huge branding exercise for us as well we didn't want to just be come in I mean some people are probably not that chuffed to come in you know it's another company fighting for the talent I guess um but but at the same time I think people like myself to have the opportunity to work for a company like Deloitte living in the southwest it's great you know yeah. I, I never would have would have worked for a company like that so um but yeah it's definitely getting out there that we've got this tech delivery capability Thanks to all of our guests today hearing about what events you're going to be putting on and how, why you've been involved in the festival. If you like the sound of any of these events or you want to find out a little bit more about what's happening out there on the, the Tech Fest week, you can check out the website, bristoltechfest.org, and you can book your events directly through the site. Just a reminder, it's the 10th to 15th of October. Look forward to seeing everyone in the flesh for uh, the first time in what seems to forever. Any further questions though, give us a shout, get in touch, but if not, catch you all soon.